you've booked an Alaskan cruise. Now we need to know, what are you gonna pack? How do you pack? For most people, this is a bucket list trip that they've been saving up to do. And the next big question is packing for it. Is that the next big question? Or is it your suitcase? It may be your suitcase. Which brings us to a little announcement. This uh, video is sponsored by Level 8, so thanks to Level 8 for sponsoring this video. We'll get a little more details on later on in this video if you stay tuned. All right, so before we get into the clothes and shoes, all the bulky items you need to bring, just a few essentials that we always travel with we wanted to highlight here. Uh, we will link them in the description below to Amazon or where you can find the uh, item. But these are just basically 10 items that we think you should always have with you on any cruise, especially going to Alaska. So we're gonna talk what to pack for a family to go to Alaska. So we're gonna, I'll say what I need, Jack will say what he needs, and then I'll briefly go over some of the- Shorts, <laughs> I like. <laughs> I'll briefly go over some of the things that we pack for our two year old, three year old daughter. So we have several things that we think you should have that would be very helpful for an Alaskan cruise. And some of those are magnetic hooks, which oh, yes. are Definitely. fantastic because the walls inside your room on a cruise are actually magnetic. So they, you can buy these little hooks that you put on the wall. And especially for Alaska, it's great for your hats, your scarves, just those extra things that you want to A, not forget when you're leaving your room and B, that are just bulky and you know you'll need. And they're also great to hang your sunglasses, just any extra little things that you may not have space for or you want to be able to see at all times. And they help with decoration hanging too. So if you're celebrating and have decorations to hang, they work out well. The other thing that I personally like to bring are travel sized shampoos, conditioners, things like that. Your products that you know you're going to want and need in just an easy little travel size so they don't take up so much space. I also personally use travel size makeup products. It just saves a little bit of extra room so you can buy new things when you're traveling or pack some extra bulky things that you might need. And then I tend to put it all in a big cosmetic bag that fits all everything I need, everything we need for Poppy. I sometimes take your stuff. We can kind of fit the entire family's stuff all in this one carry-on. And the nice thing about it too is it hooks on the back of your door so again, it's not taking up precious counter space in your tiny bathroom. You got some stuff you like to bring? You wanna share? Yes, so you're going to Alaska. I would suggest a good camera. Um, if you don't have one already, they do have some very affordable cameras that do high quality pictures now. Um, so we will link some options below as well as the camera we use for our filming and photography. But if you don't want to spend that money and you know you're not going to use a good camera, your iPhone also works great as well. Yes, iPhones are incredible for taking pictures. The Google cameras are good on the Google phones. So yes, honestly, some of the best shots we've gotten uh, have been with the phones over the camera, um, just because- It's always on you. It's always on you and it zooms and its functionality is much easier than dealing with multiple lenses. So next is a fan favorite of mine. I use it at home, I use it when we travel. It is a multi-USB, USB-C charger. It's kind of like this little stand that plugs into the outlet and then you have six to eight different USB, USB-C um, charging ports, which is great for, if you have a lot of items now, we all got iPhones, we all got watches, we all got iPads. iPads we have camera stuff, yes. just all the things you need to charge. And because it doesn't have a surge protector, you're allowed to bring it on um, kind of as, most cruise lines do not allow you to bring a multi-plug with a surge protector. Um, this, however, does not have a surge protector, so it is available to take on the cruises. And a lot of cruise rooms don't typically have an excessive amount of actual plugs. So this is helpful to be able to use that one plug and be able to charge multiple things all at once. Another item we like to use, we are a big fan of packing cubes. It makes unpacking and packing very easy. It also makes kind of condensing your luggage in the uh, suitcases and maximizing space very beneficial. I used to not like them, think they wasted space, but honestly, they are fantastic. We will go into that a little bit more later on. Now, for some of the things that we like to bring for our toddler that I think are extremely helpful. We always tend to bring a pack and play just because sometimes on the first day when you get there, getting a crib, if you have a little one, can take a very long time. Yes. 
and when they haven't napped all day, they are fussy, it's been a long travel day, you just need that nap, it's sometimes so convenient to have a pack and play with you and not having to like pray that the steward will come especially because everyone wants everything like I'm as soon one. as you board in those rooms already about like one between one and three it's poppy's prime nap time so as soon as that room is open we want to be able to get in put her down for a nap and also the only negative is is if you check it at the port with the checked luggage it'll be delivered to your room but it may not be the first bag off and it may not be there until around five o'clock at night so don't do that carry it on <laughs> yes yeah, so carry it on um, if you're gonna bring one with you and it's easier than you know how it works you can fold it up put it in the corner when it's not in use it's just so much easier to have yes. your own and they will provide you sheets pillows blankets to be used in that if you need them so for alaska we've taken poppy twice and we've done it two different ways one time we brought our travel stroller, which was super helpful for when we we're in the airport. And also that trip, we knew we were going to predominantly be staying in the town and just walking around there. And then we have also brought our hiking backpack. And for that trip, we knew we were going to be out hiking more and not needing the stroller as much. So it kind of just depends on how you, your family is going to do your Alaska trip. Another thing with a little kid that I, as the mom, love to have is an easy travel stain remover. Missy Mouth is one that I personally use. It's not sponsored at all. I just think it is an amazing product. They have these little travel ones that are just like a little like wet wipe almost. And you can use that just to like pre-treat a stain or if she's got a little something, some little food on her and you need to reuse that sweatshirt or whatever, especially for Alaska because you're trying not to overpack. It is a fantastic item to have. And then my last grouping of things for Poppy is just like, the plain play toys and the things that just are hers that she knows that she can play with and that just make our life a whole lot easier. I have several items that are my always my go-to. I'll show you the image of them here. Also, there's one other item that we forgot to mention. A travel size car seat. Oh yes. So when you travel with a little one, um, carrying around the big bulky car seat can be strenuous, a uh, pain in the butt for lack of a better term. I mean, it's big, it's bulky, it's heavy. It's a pain when you've got a boatload of other baby stuff. Yep, and us being on the road so many times, it just got to the point where we just didn't want to carry it. So what we have found is a small backpack sized car seat that is safe for the roads. We use it internationally as well. And we did take it to Norway. Uh, and you can use it in taxis and cabs, Ubers. It's amazing. We would highly suggest it. Let's get into a little bit about Level 8, the sponsor of this episode. Level 8 reached out to us a few months ago and asked if we'd be open to partnering with them for some content. So they sent us some suitcases. We've got to try them. We've been using them for most of our trips. Yes. They're fantastic. The wheels, I don't understand. They're like... It's like, it's like Vaseline. <laughs> <laughs> They're the smoothest item to push. Okay, if you haven't watched us before, I am tiny, I am not strong, I am not a big person, and I can push those suitcases with no issue. I have even pushed a stroller and the suitcase all at once and not struggled too much. So, we've put them through Which their- is a big deal. <laughs> we've put them through several trips, wears and tears. Uh, we are really enjoying having them. We have a full selection, such as the Roadrunner Carry-On, which has a laptop thing in the front. So we actually have both the Roadrunner Carry-On and the Roadrunner Pro Carry-On. They're similar yet a little bit different. Personally, if you're going on a cruise, we always like to have at least one carry-on that just has a few extra outfits in it that we actually carry on to the ship as well. Just because A, it'll have some toys that you need when you have a toddler, and B, you want to have a few extra clothes just in case if for whatever reason, God forbid, your clothes got lost either when flying to the port or, <laughs> and unfortunately, it or going happens to, at the port. Or going to LA when we're supposed to be in Florida. Oh yeah, we had that happen. <laughs> we had our, all of our suitcases go from Colorado to LA when they were supposed to go from Colorado to Florida. So. It was good that we had a few extra items yeah. just in case. Having a carry-on on your first day is very beneficial because you never know what time your suitcase is going to get there and having all your toiletries, a change of outfit, especially if you have a little one, this suitcase is perfect for that. Some of the things in the design of the Roadrunner, normal one ha can hold up to a 17-inch laptop. The Pro is a 15.6-inch laptop. It has a built-in USB charger, so charging on the go is great. 
you need to have an extra power bank yep. that you can attach to it. But when you have a toddler who wants the iPad right now and you forgot to charge it, that's helpful to have. Yes, and just again, the wheels. I don't know, like, just, just watch these. And the other thing <laughs> that I like about this Caravan too is it has a front pouch that kind of opens up really easily, which is where we keep the iPad or any extra toys that we need two seconds when we are throwing a massive fit with a child. It is super convenient and amazing to have. Yep, so if you're looking for a personal or uh, work travel suitcase for a carry-on, this is a great option. We also have the Voyager luggage, which is a big one. It's the one you would check. I personally like it because, well, I think it's more convenient for you, but it has handles everywhere. So no yes. matter what, you can like reach it and grab it. If it's coming through the carousel at the airport or whatever, it's an easy one to use. It also has this unique design where the the handle that you would use to like push it is very wide so you maximizes the amount of stuff that you can fit inside the suitcase so the aluminum alloy telescoping handle which emma just calls the big kahuna handle <laughs> uh, is great and very robust we put it through its ringers you got a little one we've gone through many airports now no issues and then it also has tsa approved locks so if you're a big fan of locking your luggage as we are nowadays uh, it does have the TSA approved locks already built in. So one of the coolest things about this suitcase is inside, uh, in the center flap, usually where you have like, you can close one side, close the other side. It has a wet and dry area. So like, say you're on a cruise to the Caribbean and you have wet clothes on your way back, say a swim trunk, so you can put them in the wet compartment and they won't get all the rest of your stuff wet. It's very handy to have. Yeah, it's super nice that's already built in. If you're in the market for a new suitcase or just want to learn more about this, we will leave the link below with a live a little discount code. Uh, it gives you 10% off your purchase. Live a little 10. Like Jack said, it gives you 10% off and they are the sponsor of this video. Now let's get into the clothes that you need to pack in that suitcase. Now Emma, if you're going to Alaska, do you need sundresses, formal nightwear? Maybe not sundresses, but Alaska tends to be on the more casual side. But at the same time, you do need some night outfits but those tend to also be a little bit more casual than like your typical Caribbean cruise. Yeah, how I'd word it is if, if when you go to the Caribbean you don't like getting dressed up, Alaska will be great for you because you don't have to get dressed up. Now if you, did, if you do <laughs> like getting dressed up, you still are more than welcome to. I'd also say it depends on the line that you're with. Like I, some lines are a little bit more casual than others where some actually require you to get dressed up. Yes, okay, so look at the specific line you are booking, but most lines will be more casual. Yeah, and I would say that you can get away with a little bit more when it comes to Alaska. And when you are packing, you kind of have your outfits for when you're just kind of on the ship, hanging out. Then you have your excursion, you're at the port, you're exploring, and then you have your night outfits. So we're gonna kind of break it down between those three sections. Personally, as a woman, <laughs> I think that there should be your day outfits on the cruise ship and then your outfits when you go out and port. So my typical day outfits would probably be jeans. I'd have like a lighter sweater cardigan kind of thing because it can tend to get a little bit colder on the cruise ship just since it is Alaska and it is cold and not dressed up but you're a little like nicer where when you're gonna get off and you're going to ports you may be hiking you may be going to glaciers you may be going dog sled riding that's when then I tended to wear my big sweatshirt my leggings a little bit more of your active wear kind of stuff so I may mix and match some of the outfits from my day wear to my excursion wear but I felt like once we got off the boat, it tended, my outfits tended to be a little bit more like active gear. And yeah, I don't know what this day and then <laughs> off the, on the ship, off the ship outfit is. So basically- And layers. That's also what I was gonna say. That's all I wear is layers. So when I'm on the ship, it is 71 degrees, 99% of the time. So usually I'm in just joggers, t-shirt, dry fit shirt. And then once we get up to port, I usually just throw on a sweater, carry my jacket and I'm good to go. See, I tend to then put on more layers, and so my outfit changes a little bit more than just like jeans, a t-shirt, and a little light sweater on the ship. That's kind of the big difference for me. And that's why you have three times the amount of suitcases. Hey, me and Papa usually fit in one while you have your own. <laughs> I'm bigger. Uh-huh. So I'll start tonight. Okay. So typically, uh, we've done Norwegian, and we will be doing Celebrity this year to Alaska. Uh, most people win, wear either what they wore to the excursions or throughout the day, or they, for men, uh, jeans, 
um, and a button up or polo works out just great. Now some lines will have formal nights or require you to have formal nights, so just keep that in mind. But typically, I just wear jeans and a button up. And from a woman's side, I will try and do a nice pair of pants and a top where then I don't have to maybe have as many bottoms, but I can bring a few options for tops. Or I'll bring a dress that I may throw on a different like cardigan or sweater just to mix it up a little bit. But again, relatively casual. We've also gone and just kept our sweatshirts on some nights too, especially in the beginning when you're just tired. Yep. But I would say you're not typically getting as dressed up for the night outfits. Now for our daughter, she kind of just has her night outfits and then her all day outfits. I may throw on an extra sweatshirt for her when we go out, but her outfits don't tend to change as much. She's not necessarily doing the hikes. She's in the backpack behind us. Yeah. So she, she's got the life. She's got it easy. So we just bring a few different options for her as well as a few extras in case if things get dirty and try and reuse as much as we can. Oh, one thing before I forget, I always pack shorts, always. You never know what you're gonna get with Alaska. You definitely have to layer, but there have been warm days where you have worn shorts and yes. needed more shorts. Yes. <laughs> um, so make sure you have all of those layers so you can go accordingly. It could be very cool in the morning and get a lot hotter as the day goes on. You just never know, so be prepared. Now let's talk shoes. We bring the same things here. So a pair of sneakers, you're gonna need some rain boots, you're gonna need some hiking, waterproof hiking boots, very specific there, like just generic hiking boots, make sure they're waterproof, and you'll need a pair of shoes for at night. That's it. That's I try and make it one night shoe. Yep. And they do make uh, waterproof hiking shoes that are also tennis shoes now, which is what I'm starting to carry. For the outerwear, um, specifically during the day, uh, we suggest like a, a puffy jacket. Definitely a puffy Definitely jacket. Definitely a rain jacket, a, a, a nice a rain jacket because it will rain quite a bit. Um, if you Alaska is a rainforest, in case you didn't know, especially where you're going on the cruise, so you will have rain at least one day, if not more. Yep. So now accessories, the extra things you need. You have me. Do you need anything else? Yes. Okay. You're gonna need a hat because it can get cold. Even in the summer weather, I would in the middle of the summer, I would still suggest bringing one just because you could have that cold, wet, damp day. Or if you're doing an excursion that goes to glaciers. Exactly. And then I would suggest a thin glove. You definitely don't need those big, huge, poofy gloves. It's not gonna be that cold, but if your hands tend to get cold, then I would bring a thin pair of gloves. Yeah, can pack a scarf if you tend to get on the cold side. Sunglasses. Sunglasses. Even though it does rain, it can be the exact opposite and be very sunny. And if you're going, for example, glaciers or anything, you have all that white snow and that reflects back at you and it is, you need sunglasses. Yeah, and also an umbrella. Uh, is very beneficial. I wouldn't suggest the giant golfing umbrellas, but maybe a little collapsible umbrella is always beneficial to have. And a bathing suit, which may be the most surprising thing of all. But we were in Alaska in the beginning and the end of the season, where it typically tends to be on the colder side. And we had a day on both trips where it was in the 70s and there was definitely people in the pool. And if you didn't want to go in the pool, there's always the hot tubs, which is also very cool when you're going through Alaska and looking at glaciers and things like that to be sitting in a hot tub. And lastly, going back to the packing cube side, we find them very helpful. I typically will use packing cubes for different things. Like I will have one packing cube that is all my night nice outfits, one that's just my pants and one that's just my shirts. And then when I get onto the ship, I don't have to unpack. I just throw that packing cube on a shelf it's easy, I know which one I need to go into to find stuff. And then a hack for moms, if you have a kid, is for Poppy, her packing cubes, her clothes are a lot tinier. So what I typically tend to do is I will take an entire outfit, pants, shirt, any extra things, roll it all up into one. So then when I go to get her outfit for the day, I just have to grab that one roll of clothes and she is done and ready. And then when it comes to your coats and the sweatshirts that are very, very bulky, I tend to just pack those on top. I do not mix those in with the packing cubes. It, the packing cube is pointless at that point. So thanks for watching this episode. We're hoping you're enjoying it. If you are, just please hit that like button. And if you would really want to, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to stay up to date on the latest. It really helps it us out. It means a lot. This is how we pack for Alaska, and we will pack for Alaska again this year. Um, but we know everyone's a little different, so let us know in the comments below if you have other things that you always pack for your trips, um, or if we miss something. Yeah.
because that always happens. Yeah, you never know. So till next time, get out and live a little. Bye guys. <laughs>